Yo, what's up guys, it's Cosmos here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to improve on keyboard and mouse in just one week in Fortnite. Before we get into it, please be sure to use code COSMOS in the item shop because it is the best way to support me, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Getting right into the video, I'm going to be covering the best keybinds for beginners that are just making the switch to keyboard and mouse. As I'm sure you're aware, keybinds are the most scary part of making the switch to keyboard and mouse because there's so many different buttons to press, and finding the perfect ones that suit you is incredibly difficult. So that's why I'm going to show you my beginner keybinds that I used after switching to keyboard and mouse after over 12 years of using a controller on every game I played. But just before we get into the keybinds though, I can't stress this enough, but a mouse with side mouse buttons is absolutely crucial to make Make your transition as seamless as possible. Without side mouse buttons, the game is going to be a whole lot harder for you, so make it a bit easier on yourself and pick up a cheap $20 mouse with side mouse buttons, and I'll link some down below that I recommend for beginner players. The first keybind we'll be changing is our crouch keybind. You want to have this set to left shift for those of you that have short pinkies that aren't comfortable hitting control on your keyboard, but use control if you're comfortable with having your pinky reach that far down in your keyboard. And then for our use keybind, I had to set the scroll wheel down as a beginner because I found it much easier on me because I didn't need to remember which key on my keyboard I had to press to pick up a weapon. I just used my scroll wheel down and it just picked up the weapons and it was very easy for me to remember. Then for our pickaxe bind, I always used my tab as my pickaxe bind. I find it incredibly accessible and super easy to remember for beginner players. As for my weapons key binds, I just use 1 through 5 on my keyboard to go through my inventory. They're easy to reach and very simple to remember. And now for arguably the most important key binds, the building key binds. And now you want something really easy to remember as a beginner because for a lot of you watching, including myself, I had never used a keyboard for anything other than webkins or club penguin. So you want to make this part as easy on yourself as possible. Set your floor to Q, set your cone to E, mouse button 2, which is your front mouse button, set that to your ramp, and then set your back mouse button to your wall. And then set your building edit to F, and then right beside your building edit bind, click that second box and then scroll wheel up, and then go down to reset building edit, click on the first box and then scroll wheel up again. Doing so just enabled scroll wheel reset and it's a must use if you don't want to die resetting a wall. It resets your builds instantly and you should be using it. These in my opinion are the most comfortable keybinds that you can use as a beginner because they're all close together and very easy to remember so you don't get overwhelmed. Now just remember these are beginner keybinds. These can be changed later when you're more used to the layout of your keyboard. These keybinds worked for me coming from a controller for over 12 years not knowing a single thing of what I was doing so these should work for you as well. Well, the next thing we'll be talking about is what keyboard you should be using as a beginner. There are thousands of keyboards, tons of different switch options, should you use a membrane or mechanical keyboard. Well, let's break this down simply for you. So for starters, you should definitely be using a mechanical keyboard. Without question, this will be the best option for every one of you that is watching. It's going to make your experience using a keyboard much more enjoyable. Now that we've chosen a type of keyboard, what switch type should you choose? For those of you who don't know, a keyboard switch is a small small mechanism you're going to find under your keycaps. These come in many different varieties. For starters, we have linear switches. These are going to be the quietest option out of the different switch types. I personally use a linear red switch on my keyboard and I have found it to be the best in my personal opinion because they're incredibly comfortable to type on and game on and they're also incredibly quiet. The switch colors that fall into this category are yellow switches, black switches, and red switches. The next switch type we have are tactile switches. These switches provide a noticeable bump when you press them letting you know that you've activated the switch. These are louder than linear switches but if you want to know that you've activated the switch on your keyboard and you like the feedback that you've pressed a key successfully, tactile switches might be a good option for you. The switch colors that fall into this category are brown switches and clear switches. And finally we have clicky switches. You have definitely heard these before. They're incredibly loud and definitely not something you want to get if you plan on gaming while people are sleeping in your house. The switch colors that fall into this category are blue switches and green switches switches. These switches also give you a small feedback bump letting you know when the switch has been activated. So the choice is now up to you. Which option here sounds the best? Once we figured that out we just need the actual keyboard. There are 60% keyboards, TKL keyboards which are just full size keyboards but you chop off the numpad. There are full size keyboards which have all the bells and whistles and you aren't missing anything. And now this part is up to you and the environment you're working with. If you have a small mouse pad which is a section we're going to cover later in this video, I recommend a 60 
60% keyboard because it's small and compact and it doesn't take up too much space and it leaves you with plenty of mouse room. And then we have TKL keyboards. This keyboard is slightly bigger than the 60% keyboard but still gives you plenty of mouse room to work with. And then we have full sized keyboards. Now this thing is giant. It takes up so much space on my mouse pad and it doesn't leave me with that much mouse room even though I'm using a full length desk mouse pad. So I personally don't recommend these for Fortnite, but if that's what you like to use, that's okay as well. So now that I've went ahead and shown you the different keyboard sizes and how they look on a mouse pad, you can go ahead and formulate a decision for yourself, and then we can go ahead and move on to the final part, actually picking a keyboard for you. So for my 60% keyboard boys out there, I recommend the GK61. You can get this keyboard in either linear, tactile, or clicky switches, so feel free to check out the Amazon link down below if you'd like to pick up this keyboard for yourself. But for those of you who want a good T KL keyboard, I recommend the Razer Black Widow V3. Unfortunately though, this keyboard only comes in either green switches which are clicky or yellow switches which are linear and quiet. And now for those of you who want a full size keyboard, I recommend the RK918 which comes in either red, brown, or blue switches which ticks off all the boxes of linear, tactile, and clicky switches. Now that we've gone in depth about which keyboard to get, which mouse should you get? Well that's going to be entirely dependent on a couple factors. I'll be sure to keep this section a lot shorter than the last one. The first thing you want to do is take note of your grip style. There's the fingertip grip which is where you have your fingertips rested on the triggers of the mouse while your palm is raised slightly above the mouse. For this grip style I recommend the Logitech G Pro mouse. This mouse is relatively cheap and for me Logitech mice have always been pretty reliable. And then we have the palm grip style. This grip style is when you have your entire palm and fingers rested on the mouse. For this grip style I recommend the HyperX Pulsefire Surge. And then for our last grip style we have the claw grip. This is essentially a hybrid of the previous two grip styles where you have your fingers make a claw shape on the triggers of the mouse while your palm rests on the base of the mouse. For this grip style, I recommend the Glorious Model O. All links to the mice I recommend will be linked down below if you'd like to check them out for yourself. And now for the thing that goes under everything, the mouse pad. Now this might be a bit more overlooked than you think. Can't you just get any mouse pad? Sure, if you want to never be able to use your wrist again in 10 years. Steer clear of these mouse pads. These are not for gaming and tons of people have them. So even if it's your last resort, do not use this mouse pad. Get an extended mouse pad which can hold both your keyboard and mouse and you'll be a happy camper. Your wrist is going to thank you when you're older. Trust me. I'll leave some links to some inexpensive extended mouse pads down below for you to check out. Now that we've covered all the basics of getting started on keyboard and mouse, I wanted to sit here and chat a little bit and give you some motivation to keep on grinding if you're struggling. This gameplay you're seeing in the background is actually me playing my first creative match using a keyboard and mouse. And as you can see from my current gameplay you've been watching all throughout this video, I have improved quite a lot. I know the struggle of getting clapped by the sweatiest kid in the lobby and wanting to quit keyboard and mouse and go back to controller, but the reality is guys, you just have to keep on moving forward. I started on a 40 inch TV on PS4 using a $5 Walmart keyboard and mouse and I still stuck to it even though it was really hard for me. I knew that some Someday, whether that be today, tomorrow, or a few weeks from now, I will improve and be glad that I made the switch to keyboard and mouse. No matter how challenging keyboard and mouse seems, I believe in you and you got this. Give it an honest shot and don't just quit after a few days. Really give it your best effort because I'm telling you guys, making the switch to keyboard and mouse will be the one decision I know you won't regret no matter how challenging it is for you right now. So with that said, everyone, have a fantastic day and it's been Cosmos and I'll see you in the next next one.